All right, let's get rolling here. Where were you guys this morning? Huh? Come on, Mike. It's like, dang. Monday must be a day off, huh? I don't think we were invited. We weren't invited. Well, we would have been. Next, next, next uh, Tuesday practice on a Monday, you guys are definitely invited, okay? So we'll have you guys out. We'll make sure uh, we get you guys started on uh, on a short week, too. Well, we, uh, you know, like Patrick said, we got to get going here because we got a lot to get done as it's into a short week. We had our first practice, Tuesday practice this morning. Um, and it was it's good to get back out on the field and get to working on some of the things from the last game and obviously uh, improve on the certain fundamentals and, and uh, things that go into playing a consistent brand of football with our next opportunity coming up on the road in our first conference game against San Diego State, who is a battle-tested team. And they've played some uh, really tough opponents and they've they played a physical brand of football, um, both at the line of scrimmage, uh, you know, on both sides of the ball. Their defense has uh, always created havoc at the line of scrimmage and has uh, caused the most fumbles in the nation this year, as well as their offense uh, being able to run the ball really well. Um, they've got a, a host of good backs and a quarterback that is capable of being a run number as well with uh, tight ends and wide receivers uh, that can stretch the field within the pass game. So there is, uh, you know, there there is going to be a great challenge that comes along with this preparation on a short week. And it's really, it is going to be a, a focus on us and the things that we need to do um, to make sure that each and every day we win the day to be prepared for the end of the week. The decision to start Bush on the sideline mm -hmm. and then put him back up in the booth in the second half, what was the philosophy behind that? Yeah, so we just wanted to uh, get Bush on the sideline to get ourselves going early in the game to be able to uh, be around the offensive guys. Um, you know, the ability for a coordinator to call it from either the sideline or the box, you know, whatever uh, whatever's best for the team is what's needed. And we felt like, you know, in the second half, um, we were in a situation where it was, uh, you know, it was good for him to go back up in the box after being on the sideline in the first half. Look around the, uh, you know, the country, and I've heard coaches say, "Hey, you know, I, I can't. We don't have our guys in until year three, year four of a staff because you need all those recruiting classes to come in. You, you're now in year three, and you start looking around at the starters, and it's like, holy cow, these are the guys from your first year. These are the guys from your second year. Is there any, I don't know, satisfaction in knowing that?" You know, you guys are evaluating and developing at the rate you want to um, when you see your early recruits start to get playing time quickly. Well, there's a, it's a combination. There's really, a, you know, there's a fair amount of older guys that are playing for us that have had the experience that, you know, if, you know we got you know, more than a few six-year seniors, um, redshirt seniors, um, seniors that haven't uh, redshirted. But then we have a whole host of freshmen and sophomores that are playing for us right now. Um, you know, again, I think we shared before, uh, there's, there's over 55% of special team snaps being taken by freshmen and sophomores. And, and now those guys are gaining experience and playing on offense and defense, whether it's guys like, uh, you know, Breezy or Ty. Um, you know, we got two freshmen playing on the O-line. And so it's awesome to see the way those guys have developed and what they're able to do. Um, Obviously, we're, we've, we've got to be all gas, no breaks in terms of how we're continuing to develop them even throughout the course of the year. Again, we've, we're battle tested as well, too. We've played some great competition uh, this year, and this team we're about to play uh, is going to be one of the best teams that we've played all year. Um, it's proven. Uh, the Mountain West is uh, always an extremely tough conference year in and year out, and we can see that. I mean, the, the strength of schedule from the Mountain West in comparison to the other conferences has been the strongest, and we've got teams that have done really well, um, and that's, uh, that's going to be the challenge each week at one game at a time, and therefore, yeah, our young players and our older players need to continue to develop and grow that consistency together. Yeah chance to look at film from the defensive line on Saturday. Were you seeing anything from uh, from that game that you weren't seeing in the first two games? And from our defensive line? Defensive line yeah. yeah, I mean, we uh, we were able to get pressure on the quarterback and we had six sacks. Um, you know, from the standpoint of the run game, it was a little bit different um, compared to what we've seen in the first couple weeks in terms of the philosophy that team used. Um, but overall, you know, I was I was excited the way we were able to be balanced, whether we were able to uh, 
um, get after the quarterback and, uh, you know, not let North Dakota take the air out of the ball because that's what they had done in the past. You know, having a mobile quarterback that, uh, that you face this week, how important is it to keep that pressure on? Yeah, there's, it's not the first uh, mobile quarterback, uh, you know, we face, but you can see if you look at the stats that, you know, the completion percentage is there, you know, 60%, and then there's 258 yards rushing already this season from the quarterback position in our, you know, in the next challenge we have. So there is, it's always that balance of being able to get pressure, but maintain the pocket, not being a robot trying to maintain the pocket, but being able to be on the attack. Next play at San Diego State, unique. I mean, it looks like their defense is different than anybody's. And then Offense, they do different things in some, so I think it's going to be a unique matchup. Yeah, I mean, it's a conference game, right? And we've played them, you know, the last three. This will be the third year in a row. Um, you know, Coach Hoke does an unbelievable job down there with uh, how he builds his team. And as we've said, they're going to be physical on both sides of the ball. Their defensive structure is slightly different than other structures that we've played against. Um, and, you know, they're, they're very well capable of controlling the game on the ground as well. And then, as we spoke on, not only do they have wide receivers, but, you know, they're tied in as their leading, uh, you know, receiver uh, thus far this year. So they can do it multiple ways. They got speed at running back. And as we said, the quarterback's number is a run number as well. Can I get back to Jordan asking about the young talent coming along? You know, we have fifth year and sixth year seniors that, that stick around. They feel like, you know, they probably earn opportunities and stuff like that. <coughs> How hard is it, though, when? Maybe a younger guy starts starts really pushing for, for their playing time, I guess. I mean, this is college football, so it's competition every single day at practice. I don't, you know, for the, for the most part, um, every single guy in the program com comes here every single day and competes. Everybody's going to have a role, and uh, how you build your role is how you perform every single day. What you do speaks a lot louder than what you say. And... I'll be honest with you too, some of these young guys are coming along because the older guys are bringing them along. It's not just the coaches, it's not just the developmental plan here. The older guys are bringing these guys along too. Um, whether it's, uh, for example, we've already seen it with Marco and DJ bringing him along, whether it's uh, George uh, helping bring along Breezy. And you know, the same things are happening at the wide receiver groups. Uh, that's, what's, that's what's been special here in terms of the older guys always taking care of the younger guys and truly uh, working to help be an additional coach for them and showing them what it looks like. You guys have obviously been winning the Mountain West, obviously one of the biggest goals there is around here. And for this program, that's happened two times in the last eight years. Um, how important, I guess it's an obvious answer, but I guess just the, the focus this year on yeah. winning, the, winning the conference again. The focus is win on this game, one game at a time. And then when we've done that and we've stayed on that track, that's how we've been able to do it. We just spoke about the Mountain West. I mean, the competition in the Mountain West uh, has improved year by year, and especially in the last couple of years, it's uh, um, you've got to be your best each and every week. There, there are no weeks off, and obviously we start off with one of the most challenging opponents in in the Mountain West. Coming on the road in the conference play, I mean, I think some people just don't realize how hard that is, whether it's basketball, football. I mean, just what, regardless of the opponent, just a road game in conference play. What, what's that like? Well, I mean, within conference play, there's. You know, you've, you've probably been there before. Now, we haven't been there with this team, you know, in, a, in more than a few years. Um, so um, that approach is vitally important, making sure that as, as a program, the logistics are set up that are as consistent to what we do here, you know, for a home game. It's going to be in a different space, different hotel. Obviously, it's a different stadium. We don't have, um, you know, our home crowd per se there in, in every place that we go. But... The process is still the process. It's exactly the same for us. We don't deviate from that, whether it's a home game, an away game. Um, you know, and it's, to be honest with you, it's college football. It's going on the road and winning a conference game. It's challenging, it's tough, but that's why you work year round. And we get to this point, and whether it's a short week or not a short week, hey, Tuesday practice on a Monday, you work year round to, to get the opportunity to, to play these games. In terms of the wide receiver room and the youth movement, through three games of production, Billy and Steph don't seem like there's a bust, bust out game yet, but you got these younger kids, and you just talked about youth pushing the veterans. Are you looking at maybe redistributing reps and getting the young wide receivers more involved in the game? I mean, uh, Steph had as many targets as anybody last game. So, you know, that's the way the game goes sometimes. The game, you know, the game before Steph caught the game winning touchdown made an unbelievable play. So. It's a, a game where a few of the younger guys were in when certain plays were called and they hit. 
like, that's all it is, you know? To be able to distribute the ball and get the ball in a lot of people's hands, I mean, our veteran wide receivers are capable of doing the same thing. Um, so again, if, if we want to look at that, then look at the targets. Don't just look at the, uh, you know, the receptions. Do you do you think your offense has a clear identity right now? Yeah, I don't. I don't think that there's no there's a consistency there with what we're doing from a philosophy standpoint. Everybody that knows football can see and know what we do in the run game, what our philosophy is in the run game, what we're going to hang our hat on. Um, you know, and obviously uh, this past game there was an emphasis on the vertical pass game, being able to get that going from week to week. You got to be able to grow. You play a different defense from week to week. This week's going to be different. We're going to see some different structures than we normally see. So um, part of that, too, is uh, being able to identify what it is that um, you can do successfully against a particular defense from week to week. Jalen made his starting debut last year against San Diego State. You guys obviously ended up with like 316 rushing yards, 105 from Taylor. Now that the cat's kind of out of the bag, so to speak, about Taylor's running ability, do you see that kind of uh, rushing production being possible again? Well, I mean, again, it, it depends on how the defense is playing. If they're putting numbers on the perimeter to take away you know, Taylor's opportunities, um, then it takes numbers away from the other part of the play. And so um, it all depends on what a defense is game plan is and what they want to take away. That's football. That's from week to week. So. Um, we'll, we will find our opportunities to continue to have Talon as a, as a run number in the game. I mean, and even, uh, you know, Mad Dog. Mad Dog's number, if, if he was to jump in there, his number's going to be a uh, run game number as well. Same as CJ. I mean, that's a part of our philosophy as we're talking about um, because it creates space on the field. It challenges the numbers of a defense, uh, not only within the run game, but obviously then affecting the, the numbers and, and within the coverage schemes and what it opens up from a defensive standpoint. Ty Battlefield, what do you love about him and what, is, what do we need to know about him since he's so young? He's been with yeah. the team, what, three and a half months? Yeah, he's been here for three and a half months. And it's just, again, it's, it's uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, Ty here and, and what he's done in, in the three months that he's been here. I mean, number one, to be able to play as a young guy, you got to be extremely mature. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, the, the game is obviously a little bit different than high school in terms of all the things that we're talking about from the game planning um, from week to week, um, the preparation that goes into it. So what I would say is that his maturity and his mindset is, uh, you know, he is much more mature than a freshman that it's been here for three months. And that's why um, he's been able to have some early success. Uh, he's extremely self-driven and, and he's, he's talented. I mean, his, his movements, his ability to run, his ability to accelerate, um, he gets and understands concepts and techniques. Each and every week, we're expecting him to continue to grow. Shoot, he just had a, a real nice practice out there this morning. We talked about how important it is to, you know, that the quarterback's number is a rush number. Taylor only had four rushes, and one of them was a sack, or five, one of them was a sack. What needs to happen for him to get going in the rush game, or are you guys, you know, kind of pleased with, with just having him run for Again, we just spoke about it. It depends upon what the defense is doing and if the defense is putting two guys off the edge to take away Taylor's number, then he's not going to pull the ball and keep it. You've asked Ethan Card to play a couple roles already this yeah. season, you know, tight end first game, then kind of jumping back yeah. into the guard position last week. What have you yeah, he's played tight end, tackle, and guard. I mean, that's you talk about the young guys that we brought in, and there's a, a transfer that's come in and gone all in and bought in, and um, he's played three different positions already, you know, in this early season. So. Uh, it's been awesome to have him here. He uh, he works every single day, and uh, he stepped up huge last week for us. Just how athletic does he have to be to kind of play all those roles? Well, yeah, the athleticism, but also you know his football intelligence and his ability to prepare playing three different positions. Um, and so again, his impact since he's been here um, has been pretty strong. And I'll be honest with you, you know, he was out more than half of a. Uh, fall camp and so he's got himself back on pace as we've gone here early on in the season and so we want to continue to see him grow. Seems like he's also starting to play with a little bit of confidence. I thought it was a little bit of his character after he made a couple of big hits on, on Saturday. Um, just how, how much confidence is he kind of playing with right now and then what was his reaction when you guys said that he was going to leave the team out you know in, in game three as a true freshman with the hammer? Yeah I mean his confidence because the way he works every single day to earn that confidence, how 
you know, his drive, his passion for the game. Every single morning when we come up in here, he's ready to go. He's locked in. Um, not only what he's doing on defense, um, he does play two positions on defense, let alone one as a true freshman, and plays, uh, you know, a lot of special teams as well. And so uh, that is something that we want to continue to recruit, that football intelligence, that mentality, that self-drive that comes in with it. Again, it, it, it has to do, too, with the older guys helping him prepare, uh, showing him what it looks like, uh, his willingness to learn, his humility, you know, and his hunger will continue to help him uh, grow. Is Marco's frame, and I consider you probably an expert on linebackers, is his frame, you know, 6'3", 235, is that ideal for the position? I'm not trying to compare him to the last guy we had here, what, six Layton, but it feels like the rangy, that, that does help at that position. Yeah, I mean, you're always looking for length, right? But there's, there's certain specs that you want for each position. Um, you know, when you want to hit on those specs for each position in terms of uh, uh, length, height, um, how long the arms are, uh, weight sometimes for us is, especially as a high school guy, not really a huge factor for us as long as they got the right frame. But yeah, inside linebacker, um, being able to find some guys with length, but more importantly, their mobility, their ability to read and react, um, their ability to be a you know, a three-phase linebacker in terms of uh, uh, the read and react in the run game, the read and react in the pass game, and then having some ability to create uh, pressure on the pocket. In the city of San Diego, you guys obviously have a number of players on the roster from, from that area in Southern California, but just San Diego in general, what, what uh, was it about that area? And obviously there's a lot of good players on there. That you guys yeah, for us, I mean, our focus is simply on this game and playing this game. Um, we've recruited uh, uh, California, Southern California, um, for a long time, we do have a fair amount of guys from Southern California. It's going to be awesome, uh, you know, for them in this opportunity. But the focus is on this game and, and primarily on our preparation. We talked a little bit about it after the game with, with Ashton, but just now you've had a couple of days to, you know, analyze, critique, or whatever. He, he's had a lot of success here, and I want to say, like, at least on the field, game with kind of adversity. How, how has he found Bless that you. from, you know, a couple of fumbles, I guess? Yeah, I mean, there's no better way than get back on the grass. And we did that this morning. He jumped back out there. And, uh, you know, obviously he's working at those things. Uh, he's, a, he's a ball carrier. He's shown to be an explosive ball carrier. And, um, you know, we can be an explosive ball carrier and take care of the ball. Um, it's it's going to be required of us. Uh, as we said, this team is leading the nation and cause fumbles. Um, so uh, he can continue to be productive and make sure that we take care of the ball at the same time. Quite a bit, and even I don't know if they're still calling the Clydesdale package, but we saw this year's version of the Clydesdale package a couple times last game. Yeah, we've the Clydesdale is uh, is a must. Um, that is a must week in and week out. Um, you know, for for Ashton and, and the Wildcat, whether it's uh, him or George, you know, and, and those guys have done those things well. Um, as we, as we continue again to use our personnel, find ways to. Uh, even in this case, you know, guys that are on defense play offense, uh, whether it's our wide receiver core and our ability, uh, um, you know, to stretch the field and or work the perimeter, um, you know, just being able to identify what the personnel does best and uh, be able to get them in position to do it. You said Clyde Dale's a must. Is that, is that probably just because you're, you're going to be a favorable, was it going to be a third and one or a fourth and one or on the goal line? Is that why? What? Well, I mean, number one, I mean, we got guys that are capable of uh, performing in, in those roles. I mean, a lot of these guys have played offense in high school and whatnot. And so um, to be able to use those bodies in the certain situations, uh, whether it be in the red zone or short yardage situations out in the field uh, is huge for our team. I mean, it's it too. It's it's awesome to see uh, offense and defense come together on, on a unit and uh, be able to help the team be successful play a lot of games anymore on grass. It's, there's almost right. all the stadiums that switch the turf. Uh, I assume that's why you've been still doing a practice a week out on the grass, but uh, going into this game. But just in general, is it, I don't know, grass stadiums versus turf. Like, yeah. Do you like, is there something special about playing on grass? Well, you said grass? it. I mean, nobody, hardly anybody, especially on the West Coast, has grass anymore, right? And so, um, yeah, part of practicing on the grass, we'll be out there uh, this week is to, is to you know make sure we're squared away and ready to go for the surface. Um, you know, for us too here practicing on the grass, whether we're going to play on grass or not, it helps the players' bodies to not be on the turf all the time too. 
one game, but with Shram out, have you seen anybody kind of step up as a vocal leader on the defense? Um, you know what? There, there are guys. Uh, DJ is all, obviously one of the strongest leaders in this program amongst everybody. Um, and he's not a guy that just leads the defense. He leads the whole team. But, you know, Dimitri. Um, Dimitri is a guy. Uh, Mike's a guy. Uh, obviously, as Markel continues to get in his rhythm, which is awesome to see how much he played in the last game and had some nice plays. You know, you talk about the younger guys. We're talking about the older guys, you know, like DJ and, and Markel, who've played well. Uh, thus far this season. Mike, you know, Callahan, who's grown his role and has played, you know, well this season. Um, Dimitri did some really nice things in the in the game last week uh, as well in terms of pressuring the quarterback and, and playing at the line of scrimmage in the run game. Um, so those guys have done a nice job stepping up and communicating. Um, Alex Tudner is always a leader uh, for us. And and so, yeah, I mean, DJ, DJ is not going to go silent either, even though he's not out there. It's just it's part of his nature to be in and around and even have an impact, if, even though he's not between the paint. How would you describe Eric McAllister's personality? Whew. Emac. Emac is a fun-loving guy that uh, um, his personality is very unique in the sense that you never know what you're going to get from Emac outside of football. <laughs> so, you know, I, I love the way Emac has matured. Um, you know, he's going to keep you on your toes, um, you know, throughout the course of the day, whether it's in the mornings before practice, at practice, after practice. Um, but the fact of the matter is uh, for EMAC to continue to have success and grow, um, it's going to come with the humility and the hunger to continue to grow in the areas as a young man that he has um, off the field within his academics. Uh, I think that's a big part of this that a lot of people, we obviously don't talk about a lot in here, but just, uh, the ability to, you know, be squared away with your time and organized with your personal life so that you can uh, set your priorities and get the things done that you need to to be able to be an efficient elite player. Along the same lines, Monday through Friday, are you seeing stuff from Prince? And then did you see stuff from Prince on <clears throat> Saturday that makes you think he can continue to grow, get more reps moving forward? Yeah, I mean, to, to be honest with you, uh, you know, we came into the season and, you know, there was, uh, you know, everybody wanted to ask about the wide receivers, but, we, we feel like we've got some veterans that have been very productive and are going to be very productive um, this season for us. And um, we obviously have saw the young guys and been able to be around those guys. So um, how that group continues to grow. Okay, In this sport, the number one thing for a team is competition. The best teams are going to see the best competition day in and day out and how they work with each other how they push each other. And really that's what it has been about, you know, for us here at practice. Um, it's not the competition against each other, it's the competition with each other that drives each other. You know, if you and I are playing wide receiver, Mike, I don't know if we'd be very fast, but it, it'd be on both of us to push each other that there is no drop off. When you went in or if I go in, there is no drop off. We know what the expectation is. We know what the standard is. We can call plays regardless of who's in there and be on the attack and make sure that our efficiency level is high. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Have a good week.